on gamers it's your boy mr pratt here back with another video tutorial to help you become an extra elite gamer uh today we're talking about uh module three and we'll be doing uh going over boolean variables conditional events and conditional sum events uh this video tutorial will essentially step you through uh on the game design in construct three module three flapping bird booleans uh, if you prefer to go through this tutorial in a video, you can do so. Um, otherwise, you can go through in the text-based uh, format. That being said, before you start this video, it is suggested that you read through these sections on Boolean variables uh, up until step number one, where we'll actually start creating the game inside this tutorial, so that you have a little bit of understanding. Uh, but really quick, just as a, a quick refresher, a Boolean variable is simply a true or false value. Um, an integer variable is something that's a number, and a string is something that is a word. So, as always, let's get started with what are we going to make. Let's take a look at that final project. So when I come to the editor, I'm going to go ahead and open up a file. I'm going to locate the GitHub repo that you cloned for this game, or from uh, my original module. Uh, this one is Flapping Bird Booleans, and you should load the... Uh, you should load the, C the finished C3P file to take a look at what you're going to make. So, what you're going to be making is, uh, there is a, a Flappy Bird game here. If I come into the actual game and I preview the project, there's a Flappy Bird game that has power-ups added inside of it. So if you grab different power-ups, you can see that some of them decide to slow time, like the ham. Let's find a different one. Let's see if I can actually do that. Banana adds five to my score. You notice that I added additional points of score there. We are going to add in an invincibility section so that that pipe doesn't actually blow up. Now, in this tutorial, we're not starting from a blank game. You're actually going to be starting from a game instead. So let's go ahead and close this project. And let's open up the other project folder. Okay, so when you're first brought to the game, you're open up inside the object repo, you have a game event sheet, and you have a game layout itself. You also have a start layout. You have two different event sheets, game events and start events. We are not going to use the start event sheet here. We are only going to use the game events sheet. You'll notice there's also coding groups. Uh, and how these coding groups work is there are sections of code that are related to each other. So everything that's related to the background would be in here. Everything that's related to collision events would be inside of here. You'll also notice that it is fully commented, as you learned from the last tutorial, how to actually write in comments. Anything that's inside of a yellow code group, you do not have to mess around with. You only have to mess around with the green code groups. However, you're more than welcome to go into the yellow code, gr uh, code group so you can see how the game is actually programmed. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to make a food sprite. So we're going to make our object repository, and this is where we're actually going to store most of the things in our game. So let's double click. We'll make a new sprite object, and we need to upload some animations. Uh, the animations for this sprite object are inside the game repo, inside your Flappy Birds Boolean. So if I come inside game assets, you can see I found everything, and I'm going to open these three. Cool. Actually, I'm going to, and then I'm going to duplicate this animation a few times. Let's duplicate it. Let's duplicate it. We'll move this over here so you guys can actually see what it is I'm doing. And let's go ahead and rename these. We've got apple, we've got banana, and we've got ham. So inside my apple, I'm going to shift select and delete all the frames that are not an apple. Inside of my banana, I'm going to shift select. Oops. I'm going to shift select everything that's not a banana and inside the ham I'm going to delete everything that's not a piece of ham. Uh, similar to the last tutorial how you made a quick animation, I'd like you to make a quick animation here. Uh, in my case I'm going to uh, loop these because I do not want them to uh, unloop. Uh, and then we can go ahead and right click and preview and we can see how fast we like this animation. If we think that's a little too fast, we can slow it down to show the number of frames we want. And I think three is a little more appropriate for what I want. 
And if you want it a little bit faster, you can even speed this up to show the number of frames you'd like in the show. So it's your choice depending how fast you want to make this. I like the look of three, um, but you might not. One other thing we want to do when we uh, add in artwork is we want to make sure that uh, this white space is fully cropped uh, outside of our image. So you can notice here that there's this nice black uh, box that is wrapped around. Uh, one thing that I like to do um, just in case is I click on this crop tool uh, and I like to apply to all animations. And what this crop tool basically does is it takes in any white space that was there. So sometimes you might upload an image that's relatively large. Um, like let's say for, it's really big, it's got a lot of transparent pixels. You wanna crop everything so that it brings in that artwork. All right, so we've got our uh, fruit added in. Let's go ahead and resize that so it's a little more appropriate. I'm gonna hold shift as I resize so that it uh, holds its, um, its orientation. And instead of calling it Sprite, I'm gonna give it a different name. So I'm gonna come on up over here into the object properties. I'm gonna call this one our food sprite. And we need to add a few instance variables to our food sprite. So we're gonna add two instance variables. Let's add a new one. We're gonna call this one is eaten. And this is going to be our Boolean. And initially it's going to be false. So we do not want to check this. And our description is check if food was in contact with bird. And we're gonna add a second instance variable, which is going to be the power up type. We're gonna call this one a string because it's gonna be a word and our initial value is gonna be nothing. We, we don't wanna do this because what this is gonna let us do later in the game is it's gonna let us set, set the power up type. So for instance, we could have one fruit be in, invincible, we could have one fruit be extra score, and we could have one fruit be uh, slow time. But in any case, this initial value is going to be nothing. We're not going to put anything uh, in there. So now we need to make this fruit spawn because we've got it in our in our object repo, but if we go to the actual game and we were to test this, you'll notice that no fruit is going to spawn because we haven't actually told our game to spawn that fruit. So let's go ahead and add in the code to actually make it spawn now. So we're going to come to game events. And inside the game events, we're going to add a new global number. And uh, we're going to, oops, sorry. I need to right click. We're going to add a global variable. We're going to call this one a number. We're going to call this one seconds per power up. And initial value is going to be three and a half seconds. And this is going to be used to time power up spawns. So what we've done is we've made a global number that allows us to uh, basically reference inside of our code. And what we're going to do is we want to create a new food sprite every so many seconds. And the reason we want to store this in a variable is because if we want to come back and change this later, we could change this to uh, 5.6. We could change this to uh, 8.9. And it will come back and keep changing for us. So, and it will change the code for however long we want those things to spawn. So I'm going to make it three and a half seconds. I'm going to head down to the power-ups group because we want to have everything inside of the power-ups. We're going to add an event to the power-ups. Inside system, we're going to add a new uh, seconds. So every X seconds, you'll probably notice that that's a variable. So I'm going to choose every X seconds. And instead of choosing one second, I'm actually going to start typing in my variable name, seconds per power up. You notice it pops up right here. If I double click on it, it pops in. And now every seconds per power up seconds, it's going to do these actions. So inside these actions, we want to actually start creating our event. So I'm going to add an action and let's go to food sprite. Oh, sorry, uh, not food sprite. We want to go to uh, add action system, create an object. And the object we want to create is our food sprite. We're going to create this one on layer zero because we only have one layer. Um, and uh, at our X value, now we have to choose what appropriate X and Y values are. So if we were to just every three and a half seconds create this food sprite and we come into our game and we play it, 
you'll notice that every three and a half seconds, you're going to have a piece of fruit that is going to pop up in the top left-hand corner. Did you see it there? Do you see that apple that just popped up in the top left-hand corner? We don't want it in zero, zero. So we need to choose an appropriate point for this thing to pop in. Uh, if you look down on the bottom of our screen here, you see where it says mouse. And as I move the mouse left and right, you can see that the left value changes and up and down the right value changes. That is our X and our Y coordinates. Um, so you need to choose where along the X axis you'd like this thing to spawn. So for my X axis, I think I want my fruit to spawn at about 375. I think that's appropriate. So I'll come to my game events and for my X axis, I'll choose 375. And for my Y axis, we actually want this to be random because if we had it uh, pop up the exact same location every time, that is always gonna be the exact same height. And we don't want that. We want some variability in our game. So we're gonna learn about a new um, method here called random. And what random lets us do is we can type in the word random and it, we can type in a range of numbers. So we can generate between two values, between zero, comma, and whatever other number you want. So what's gonna happen is this gonna randomly generate a Y coordinate for us between the value of zero and 440. But we don't probably want to do zero because that means we could be all the way up here in the corner and our bird knight might be able to get it. And we probably don't want to do 440 because that would mean we'd have to be right here on the ground and that'd be really low. So I think I'm gonna choose 390 and probably 50 to choose between. So I'm gonna choose between 50 and 390. Let's go back to our game. Let's give it a quick play. And now you'll notice that we should start having fruit spawn every three and a half seconds at random places along that 375 and along the other part. Awesome, so now we've got our fruit spawning. But you'll notice it's always apple um, and uh, it's just kind of sitting there on the side. Um, so, what we need to do is we need to set its animation uh, and then we also need to set a power up type before we start making it move across our screen. So underneath the same action, I'm gonna add a new action, go to food sprite, and once we spawn it, we're gonna set the animation. And uh, I can actually put in one quotation mark here and it will tell me what animations are currently here. So I'm gonna choose banana. And I'm gonna start it from the beginning. So once I spawn it, it's gonna set the animation to banana. Now, I only want the bananas to be invincible. I want the apple and the ham to do something different. So instead, I'm gonna add a blank sub-event here. I can press the B on my keyboard, or I can right-click, add a blank sub-event. And in the sub-event, I'm gonna check to see which animation the fruit sprite is playing. So I'm gonna search for animation, and I'm going to is playing the animation banana. So if the animation banana is playing, I want to set it to invincible. So I'll go to food sprite. I'm going to say set the instance variable, set the value of our string, our power up type to invincible. So now when the animation starts, it's going to start as invincible. Um, so let's go ahead and play and see what happens. So if I play this, there's a banana there, and this banana should have the instance variable called invincible. So let's go ahead and let's toggle a breakpoint here, and let's debug our layout. So let's see here. So we've got, oh, I think we may have spawned a banana. So if you notice while I'm debugging, it says that right here, this is the code is currently running. So let's go ahead and do a step. And if you notice on our screen over here, when I come to food sprite, number zero, its name is Food Sprite, and its power up type is Invincible. Let's go ahead and reload that, see if we can make a different Food Sprite load for us, not a banana. Oh, it happens, oh, it's always going to be banana. I forgot, because we set the animation to banana. So that's working. Let's go ahead and turn that breakpoint off, and let's actually start making our, um, our fruit move across the screen. Uh, so how we're going to do that is we are going to go into the background section of code. Uh, and there is a new piece of code here that we're going to basically borrow. So what this line here is doing is it's making our tiled background move across our screen. So I'm actually going to add an 
I'm going to go to open this up and I'm going to copy this line of code. Let's add a new action. We'll go to food sprite. We're going to go to set X and we can just go ahead and paste that code in. Um, now, we do not want to set it against the tiled background X. We're actually going to set this against the food sprite dot X. So this is the current X value of the food sprite, subtracting the value of scroll speed, which is a variable we set up top, times by delta time. Uh, and all that is, that's a really fancy way of saying that every single tick, we want the food sprites X value to subtract the value of the scroll speed times how many frames we've moved in our game. So if we've moved one frame in our game, the food sprites X value should be minus one. If we've moved 50 frames in our game, the food sprites X should be minus 50 frames. So if we were to play this, what this is going to do is this is going to set the X to the current value of the food sprite minus our scroll speed, which is set up here, times delta time. So let's go ahead in our game. Let's go ahead and do a quick play. And we should notice that now our fruit should start moving across the screen, just like the other pipes were. Beautiful. So now you'll probably notice that uh, let's go ahead and let's do another debug. And if we debug this layout, I want you to watch the food sprite value down here. And I want you to watch, we have one food sprite. We have two food sprites. We have three food sprites. The problem is we're not destroying the food sprites. This will become a problem because if you don't destroy a food sprite when it moves off the screen, it's going to stay around forever and your game's going to keep making it, keep making it, keep making it, and it's going to eventually crash your game because you have so many food sprites that are floating off in the distance. So we need to go ahead and destroy that food sprite after a certain distance. We're also going to borrow another uh, piece of code here. Uh, so we're going to come up into, where is it? Ah, so we're going to borrow another piece of code here inside the background section. So if you notice, when the top pipe and the bottom pipe X values are less than negative 50, you destroy it. We're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing. But instead of our bottom pipes, we're going to say when the food sprites X value is less than or equal to negative 50, we should destroy that food sprite. So this is gonna check for each food sprite object, when the food sprite's X is less than negative 50, it will destroy that food sprite object. So if we were to debug our game again, we should notice that instead of having infinite food sprites start to tally up on the left-hand side, we get one and we're back down to zero when it disappears. So the next thing we have to do is now we've got our, our food spawning and it's moving across the screen. We have to actually make that food destroyed or we have to actually make that bird do something with that food. So we destroyed it, it's moving, but it's not doing anything yet. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, create a collision event and we're gonna add a new bird event and we're gonna say overlapping. So is the bird overlapping a food sprite? We're going to uh, set our birds uh, or set our food sprites uh, boolean variable to true. So we're going to set is eaten to true. So for our food sprite, we're going to set is eaten to true. That means that if it has overlapped the food sprite, is eaten is true. Bing. Uh, that means that that word is eaten, but the food won't be destroyed yet. Um, so now we have to actually go ahead and create an invincibility. And to do that, we're going to add a uh, new behavior to our bird called a timer. So if I go to the bird, if I come over to behaviors, we're going to add a new behavior and we're going to add the timer behavior. What the timer behavior lets us do is it lets us set a timer for so many seconds. Um, and then when the timer finishes, we can make things happen. So let's go back to our power up code. Um, and in our power up code, we're going to say food sprite. We're going to check is the Boolean instant variable set. So is, if the food sprites Boolean, oh, actually, sorry, not is eaten. We're going to check the uh, value of an instance variable. And if that 
variable is equal to invincible. So if the food sprite is equal to invincible and we're going to pair the boolean is eaten, we should do something. So in this case, this is two conditions. We're checking is the power up we picked up invincibility and is the power up we picked up eaten. Okay. In this case, now we're actually going to start making invincibility. So we're going to add an action. We'll go to the bird. We'll go to a timer and we're going to start a timer for, let's say, three seconds. It's going to go once and the tag is going to be invincible. This tag is just for you because you can set multiple timers. And we want to create an invincible timer. So we're going to create an invincible timer uh, and on the bird, we're going to set uh, its Boolean. Oh, we need to add a invincibility Boolean to our bird. So let's go ahead to our instance variables. Let's add a invincible Boolean. And now our bird has a Boolean on it that checks whether it's invincible or not. So if the bird touches a food sprite, it sets that to eaten true. If that food sprite is invincible and it was eaten, you should start the timer invincibility and you should toggle the boolean or you should turn on the boolean invincible. Now, if we were to play this, you'll notice that our bird is still very much going to die if we pick up a fruit. So let's go ahead and pick that up. If I can actually pick it up properly. So I picked up the fruit, I hit the ground and I still died because we haven't actually made those collision events disappear yet. So let's go ahead and make those collision events disappear. So underneath collisions, I'm going to add a new event to collision. And inside the bird, I'm going to check against the Boolean. Is the Boolean variable set? Are we invincible? So if we are invincible, I do not want to be able to do this. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to invert this. So if I right click, choose invert, we now have a not condition. So if the bird is not invincible, it should do everything in this line. So I'm going to grab all my collision events. I'll put them inside. And if my bird is not invincible, I'm going to be able to be uh, colliding with things. But if I am invincible, it will ignore all of that. So let's go ahead and test this out. So if I run, I should be able to pick up a piece of fruit. I'm invincible now, and now you can see that I am invincible for these three seconds, and these pipes are no longer killing me. But you've also noticed that I'm here for much longer than three seconds, because we forgot to turn invincibility off. You'll also probably notice that when we touch a banana, it's not disappearing. So what we need to do is we need to add in another event for our fruit. When it's power up type in and it is eaten, we need to destroy that piece of fruit. And then we need to add another event so that when the invincibility timer is over, we can be hit by things again. So I'm going to add event to power ups, go to bird, I'm going to search for timer. On timer means it's triggered when a timer has elapsed, it means it's finished. So on timer with the tag invincible. And I'm going to double check that I spelled that correctly. So I'm going to copy my timer. I'm going to paste it on there. So on timer invincible, I'm going to set invincibility to false. Now our bird is capable of dying. Um, so let's go ahead and run that. So let's see if I go pick up a banana, I should be invincible to three seconds, and now if I were to touch another pillar, I die. Beautiful. That's exactly what we're looking for. Um, so now what I'd like you to do, that is the base tutorial on looking at Boolean variables. Um, I highly suggest you go back and do a quick reread through the tutorial in case you miss any of that stuff. You can pause, uh, replay this, uh, and then take a look at your own um, extension ideas. What other things can you do? Um, can you create other food sprites? Can you make one slow down time? Can you make one add extra score? Uh, see what you can do. Uh, other than that, thanks for tuning in and I will see you guys in the next video.